this beautiful autumn day, I'm happy to be together with Professor Paul Gavriluk, a professor of theology at the uh, St. Thomas University in St. Paul, Minnesota, in the US. Um, a dear friend, uh, not only of mine, but of many here in Yash. And um, welcome, Professor. I'm very glad to be here. We are glad to have you. And uh, let me just ask why, how come have you come to Yash? Is it your first time here? Uh, this is actually my second uh, visit to Yash. Uh, I visited Yash for the first time in 2015. I'm not mistaken, and on the occasion of the translation of two of my books, oh. uh, one on early church history and the other on modern uh, Russian Orthodox theology that were translated by the Doxology, a publishing house in Romania. Let me go on and say that your name, your activity has been linked lately to the found, founding of a new organizational association. So it's uh, the International Orthodox Theological Association, uh, which we can call, uh, for the sake of brevity, IOTA or IOTA. Um, that's, that's something new, something grand, if I may anticipate a bit. And uh, what is IOTA and which are, what are its objectives? Uh, well, IOTA, of course, is the smallest letter of the Greek alphabet. And so from the very beginning, we wanted to put everything that we as scholars and as professionals do on behalf of the church in perspective. Uh, so we conceived uh, IOTA uh, shortly after the Council of Crete. And it was the experience of the Council, the experience of finding um, a path to pan-Orthodox unity that proved to be in many ways so arduous and so difficult uh, that generated our thoughts uh, that also something could be done at a grassroots level to support pan-Orthodox unity. So it was the council that spurred us to thinking uh, about an association such as the International Orthodox Theological Association. So um, who, is, who is willing and who is allowed to become a member? Is there a manner in which one becomes uh, a member? Yeah, we, we, we follow standard uh, practices of uh, any professional uh, organization, and so there are different uh, membership types. Uh, and so you could, for example, be uh, a scholar uh, involved in the studies of uh, Orthodox Christian studies, uh, and so that would be regular membership. And then we also have memberships for community members, and then we have memberships for uh, people who are professionals and do not have terminal degrees or doctoral degrees, but uh, let's say uh, doctors, lawyers, etc., who are interested in uh, all questions related to faith and culture. Uh, we also have associate uh, memberships for the non-Orthodox scholars that are involved in the ecumenical dialogue. Uh, and in addition, uh, for those who do not presently have permanent positions and for students, uh, we also have student memberships and discounted or supported memberships. So we're trying to be as open as we possibly can. That's great. It sounds great. And uh, what else sounds great, I would say, is that you are organizing a first big conference uh, in Yash on 9 to 12th of January 2019. And that will be a a rather great event, I would say, uh, and a big event. How was the idea of such an event, uh, and maybe even the idea of such an organization, uh, born? Well, we were inspired when we were in Crete, and I had the privilege uh, of serving uh, as an independent consultant of the Ecumenical Patriarchate uh, on external affairs and Crete. Uh, when we were in Crete, we were inspired by the words of Patriarch Daniel, of the Romanian Orthodox Church uh, who spoke or at least expressed a hope uh, that uh, a council uh, of this sort could happen every seven or ten years. And so we thought that as scholars, as lay leaders, as professionals and churchmen, uh, uh, we could contribute to the concilia process. And so the idea for the organization was our iota, as it were, our contribution to 
the conciliar process. And then subsequently, I spoke uh, to a number of very prominent scholars around the world. And intuitively, without me even having to convince them, they all felt that such a pan-Orthodox organization that would combine the efforts of all uh, people of goodwill and scholars around the world uh, would be desirable. So I actually didn't have to sell anybody on the idea. People intuitively understood that something like that would be good. And Romania um, felt like a natural choice uh, because in many uh, respects, it's a country with a very rich uh, and a very strong uh, Orthodox tradition and history. And it's also a country that's very often uh, neglected or unjustly, uh, shall we say, uh, forgotten uh, in the discussions uh, and in the narratives of, of Orthodox world history. So because I had friends in Yash and because I felt that I could um, have great support, uh, specifically uh, with the team at Doxologia, uh, led by Catalin Jekyll, um, I, I, I felt very comfortable approaching uh, him, uh, and I was delighted to find such a great support in the Archdiocese. Since we are speaking about the conference, I ask you to tell us a few, uh, a few words on the main topic of the conference and maybe also on uh, other you know, dominating themes that uh, they'll be tackled there. Um. Uh, so the overarching uh, topic of the conference is pan-Orthodox unity and conciliarity. And within that topic, we wish to shed light on various questions of historical and contemporary importance. So for example, there will be a session dedicated to the Council of Yash of 1642. While the event is widely known in Romania, and especially here locally, I think it deserves greater exposure in the larger Orthodox world. We will have a session on uh, the, the notion of synodality and primacy in the Orthodox Church, also a question uh, that is of great import both for the Orthodox Church and also for the ecumenical dialogue. Uh, we will have sessions uh, that engage critically with uh, what is now the heritage uh, of the Council of Crete. But in addition to that, there will also be a wide variety of topics on uh, both classical uh, theological issues, such as, for example, Philokalia and its uh, reception through the centuries, uh, which is also significant for this region, to contemporary issues, uh, issues of bioethics, uh, issues uh, pertaining to uh, orthodoxy and international relations, uh, and a plethora of other questions, such as, for example, uh, uh, orthodoxy and peace in the Middle East. Well, since you brought up these many and this, this much variety of, uh, of discussions, maybe I'm not wrong to assume that uh, there will be among the participants quite a lot of specialists that are not theologians per se, but they are maybe specialists like medical doctors or bioethicians. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're quite right. Uh, when we say International Orthodox Theological Association, what we mean is that these are people who have had some uh, exposure to Orthodox theology and are theologically literate. Uh, but their final degrees and their training, their principal training, does not have to be in theology. So we're thinking of theology as something that grounds and unifies all knowledge. Uh, but we're really conceiving of this organization as tackling questions of faith and culture more broadly. So to use, if you will, a Renaissance Italian word, we're thinking of this organization as an orthodox republic of letters. In other words, republic of scholars who come from different walks of life and also of professionals and church leaders. So we're glad uh, that so many clergy will be responding also to our call for papers. We, are, we have been very surprised by just the incredible uh, response that we've had all over the world. And so to give you a sense of how large the conference is going to be, we're expecting more than 200 speakers from over 30 countries. And that is also including such uh, countries as Hong Kong and Kenya uh, and Brazil, uh, and uh, obviously also what will be very well represented are countries in Eastern and Central Europe. It sounds impressive, if I may say so. And uh, am I wrong to assume that uh, it's, it's been a long time since such a big conference has, has 
this kind of conference of this, of this amplitude has been organized? In terms of the scholarly output, uh, we believe it would be safe to say that we are poised to become the largest gathering of Orthodox scholars in modern history. Um, again, we thought that even having about 100 speakers would be significant, but as I said, uh, the, uh, the response to our call for papers has just been overwhelming, and we certainly couldn't accept all worthwhile proposals, but it would be a very, very rich fair, and we hope very much that um, as this work is received by the church that it would bear its fruit in due course. Perhaps it's, it's time to say a little bit about um, the um, group that has organized, has monitorized, and how uh, the selection perhaps of, of, of the uh, papers was conducted. Um, yeah, so I, I followed, uh, in, in creating IOTA, I, I followed the general structure of the American Academy of Religion, uh, which is a professional association that has existed for nearly a century now. Uh, and and uh, what we created was our board that includes uh, 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 Professor Gail Voloschek, um, who is a major internationally known radiology scientist, uh, and Carrie Frederick Frost, who is um, uh, our secretary and also has um, a specialization in the founding of nonprofits. We conceived of IOTA as instantiated in 25 permanent groups. And so these groups, to give you some sense, range from classical theological subjects such as my own field patristics or dogmatic theology or, or moral theology to more contemporary uh, uh, um, topics or more contemporary um, uh, fields such as religion and science uh, or Christianity in the Middle East uh, or Christianity uh, and international relations and politics. Um, or the role of women in the church. Uh, and so we believe that what we're creating essentially is truly representative uh, of the, set, the sets of issues and problems that the church at large needs to grapple with. And so the idea is to give people a concrete experience of how we can begin to think with the church as scholars, as intellectuals, as professionals, uh, so as, as to contribute to the shaping of one history. Because for a very long period of time, the Orthodox churches have led very isolated histories. In other words, the Russian church ha has its own, uh, if you will, story to tell about its past. And the Greek church has its own story to tell. And the Romanian church has its own story. And this is an opportunity, if you will, uh, at the grassroots to establish a pan-Orthodox society that would foster that kind of exchange of ideas and hopefully contribute its own and make its own mark on the conciliar process. What do you say about uh, uh, you know, the dissemination of, of, the, of the fruits of this conference? The primary purpose of the conference is to give people an experience uh, of meeting together and brainstorming various ideas. Just the very fact that you will actually have uh, uh, thinkers from so many countries in one place creates a completely new environment and a completely new, it's a bit like jazz in many ways, it's sort of theological jazz. And therefore, I would not, not like to always determine what will come as a result of the conference. I know that we will not be publishing any official statements, and so to the extent to which we ourselves do not presume to speak on behalf of the church, uh, we are simply a think tank uh, in which the main questions uh, and the main positions uh, would be forged. If you think of the 20th century, then the main issue of the 20th century has been the doctrine of the church or ecclesiology. This has been the kind of the major headache of the ecumenical movement and indeed world orthodoxy at large. Now, one way in which it finds its expression, this particular question, is of course in our perpetual jurisdictional disputes. So what I tried to create with the people that are behind IOTA is a space uh, in which we could get together and discuss things in a free and respectful manner, uh, but a space also that would be as free of ecclesiastical power play and geopolitics as it's theoretically possible. 
Uh, now, ideally, of course, any society here on Earth needs to, in some ways, uh, have as its goal uh, the communion of the saints. Now, in this fallen world, obviously, this is only possible uh, in a very, very imperfect manner. Uh, but our idea is that we could discuss the things that truly matter without being dominated and without the outcome of the conversation being determined by narrow ecclesiastical and political interests. That's the hope, that's the aspiration, and giving people that experience itself would be novel in orthodoxy, I dare say. Now, in terms of the 21st century, as Metropolitan Callistos Ware, who in fact uh, has graciously agreed to be a keynote at the conference, so he will be uh, giving the major lecture. Um, as Metropolitan Callistos Ware has observed, the main uh, uh, question of the 21st century is the doctrine of the human person. And so that issue, what to make uh, of uh, humanity and the image and likeness of God in us and how to understand the phenomenon of man uh, is also going to be uh, at the center uh, of our deliberations. Uh, it's not a question that at this point is an overarching theme. Perhaps it's a question also for future conferences, but it certainly is a question uh, or a topic that will emerge as a central topic, no doubt. Uh, from our deliberations. I can imagine most of our viewers uh, would be interested to know if there is um, an interest for, to have the general public also present uh, to some degree, or to have, to have a reception from the general public maybe. Uh, could you tell us a bit uh, if this conference is open to the public, in what degree? So, so in many, yeah, for many, um, professional societies, uh, it's usually a very delicate balance uh, between, on the one hand, uh, members and, and the conversation that could be kept at a certain level, and also the importance of it being accessible. So in terms of general public, we're, we're hoping to do two major things. First of all, we are publishing all abstracts of the papers online. Uh, and so what that means is that we wish even before the conference to be open about the things that we are planning to discuss. Uh, and, the sec and secondly, I have just mentioned a public lecture of Metropolitan Callistos, which will uh, take place at the National Theater of Yash. And that magnificent facility can hold uh, several hundred people, and uh, the members of the public uh, would be very much uh, welcome uh, at that opening event. Uh, we also hope, of course, that the uh, faculty of different universities and schools in the area would join us for various sessions uh, during, uh, during the sessions of the conference. And we're working with the Archdiocese on that. To, ans to anticipate for, for a bit, uh, can you tell us a bit about the program, the, um, maybe how a day would, would look like, uh, a, day, a conference day? Would, uh... Uh, yes. So. Yeah. The idea, the idea is to give people both an opportunity, obviously, to discuss their ideas at a formal session, se at the formal sessions, and also to have enough time for informal uh, fellowship. And so there needs to be a good balance uh, between those two. So uh, because of the, we're thinking of 50 to 60 full sessions, and so they will be, there will be five or six parallel courses on which those would run. And then uh, that would mean also about four sessions a day. So four sessions a day um, seem to be a reasonable pace for three, uh, for three days. And within that, oh, there will also be a uh, great time for fellowship that would require rivers of uh, coffee, I guess. And, and we hope, yes, we hope that caffeine will be flowing like river, because caffeine, after all, is the main engine of intellectual life. Without coffee, there is no intellectual life. Right. So, uh, to come closer to, to the end of our meeting, I would uh, very much like to know, what are your hopes, or maybe personal hopes and uh, expectations from, from this conference? And maybe for the whole enterprise, well, for the IOTA enterprise, but especially for the conference. I mean, I am interested, I mean, I'm, whenever I'm at the conferences, what I'm looking for, for example, is junior talent, sort of rising stars and people who could contribute to the welfare of the church long term. Uh, and also, for example, my friends in the United States, we're already planning uh, on publishing new voices 
uh, in uh, Orthodox theology, um, uh, which would be voices that come from non-Anglo-American sphere. So they will be published in English, but they will come from the countries other than the United States, uh, Canada, uh, and the United Kingdom. Uh, and so that's one, that's one of the concrete outcomes of the conference. The second uh, concrete outcome uh, would be primarily in a very informal way, seeing what questions shake out as the main questions that trouble people at large. That are, it's, it's like taking a pulse of where the church is, or at least where the uh, people who are thinking about the future of the church, uh, what are the main questions that concern them. And I think I would very much hope that, I mean, I would not want to predetermine uh, what these things are because I would very much like for IOTA to be as unscripted as it possibly uh, can be. And so uh, this is, you know, as my, um, uh, as my grandfather, uh, who is a conductor in Hungary, uh, would say uh, that uh, the conductor uh, doesn't make sound, uh, he makes music. Uh, and so what I hope to do as somebody who is the founding president of IOTA uh, is precisely to make music without making any sound. Well, that sounds great, if uh, the pun may be allowed. And uh, what would be next for the IOTA then? Well, uh, we will take about two years uh, to sift through this extraordinary wealth, uh, this cornucopia uh, of, of, of interesting ideas and insight and papers uh, that uh, will be read and discussed uh, at the conference. No doubt, uh, new projects would emerge. Uh, those would be probably cooperative projects. And the important part is those would be international projects. So the idea is to allow a significant number of lay leaders and church leaders, uh, and we also hope to have uh, uh, the scholar bishops and bishops in our midst, um, uh, to give them a concrete um, experience of sort of pan-Orthodox uh, exchange and communication. I mean, I should say that in this regard, of course, uh, there are other uh, good attempts at such communication, but they're usually, uh, they're usually uh, uh, meant for only a short period of time, and they're meant for a very, very specific goal, such as a production of a common statement. And I think these are very important. What we're trying to build is a place is where uh, people from all Orthodox churches, all Orthodox jurisdictions can, can come together and, and recognize uh, a sense of their common uh, task, or a sense of their common destiny, a sense of their common calling uh, within the church universal. Framework, Ivan, you can call it? Uh, yes, yes, we would, like, we would like to see, because nothing, no good effort is possible without robust institutions. At least this, is, this has been my experience living in the West, that robust institutions such as universities, for example, uh, or the structures that build up, for example, democracy, are crucial uh, for any worthwhile endeavor to succeed. So what we're hoping is we're hoping to have mega conferences every four years, but then between those conferences, um, we're also hoping to have smaller projects and smaller symposia, such as a symposium in Jerusalem that we held a year ago. Um, uh, we're hoping to have them uh, more regularly. But four years, doesn't it conflict with the Olympics? Uh, hopefully we're not going to be competing with Olympics, but you could certainly think of IOTA as Orthodox Olympics where Fair everybody right. wins. Where everybody wins. Well, if I may allow to say to summarize a little bit for our viewers. We have here a major, a large organization trying to provide a platform for dialogue, a framework to build up a framework for Orthodox theologians and non-theologians but interested in theology, who are organizing a first conference, a large one, um, here in Yash in January 2019, uh, where under, guidance, under the guidance of 50, uh, if I know, I'm not mistaken, 50 great scholars, each specialist in their fields, quite a few younger and older voices would be able to provide their insights on different topics and uh, free from 
uh, you know, in complete freedom, and then also under the supervision of, of great scholars. I think that's, that's a great, uh, I'm excited actually. And uh, I congratulate you on that idea and on the, the effort that you put. Thank you. Well, we're also very grateful uh, to the Archdiocese of Yash and particularly to Metropolitan Teofan for very strong support uh, of this endeavor from the very beginning. You know, we were uh, obviously very profoundly moved by the fact that both the Holy Synod of the Romanian Orthodox Church and Patriarch Daniel blessed the endeavor. Uh, we have the support of other church leaders, including the Ecumenical Patriarchate and other uh, local uh, churches. IOTA, of course, will remain a pan-Orthodox endeavor uh, that seeks to, um, to have productive and close relationships uh, with the church leaders. Uh, that's our aspiration for the future.